Hi everyone, it's Dr. Guthels here today, and I wanted to go over how to play Minecraft. I wanted to kind of describe what Minecraft is to you and how to play it, um, because this is something that as an educator is quite intimidating. Your students will have played for hundreds of hours probably already, and they talk about it, and it's just very intimidating um, trying to teach with something that you've never played before. So. Um, I recommend that you don't just watch this video, but you kind of follow along. So you should have already purchased either the Windows or Mac version of Minecraft. That's the 2695 version. You can find that at Minecraft.net. Um, this works best if you're on that version. And when you first launch it, it'll ask you to log in. It'll have uh, something similar to this. If you've previously logged in, though, you could just click play. Let's go ahead and start playing. Now, there are two ways of playing Minecraft. There's single player and multiplayer. In Learn to Mod, we actually use multiplayer because what multiplayer means is that you're going to connect to a server and that's how you're going to play the game. You're going to play it on the server. So really, Minecraft is running on a server and you're playing it um, through there. Now, we're going to be playing single player version in this demo because I just want to kind of give you the understanding of how Minecraft works. Um, and if you haven't already gotten Learn to Mod, then um, you can play the single player version without having to get it. So um, single player version means that you're in your own world by yourself and the world is infinitely large and randomly created. So I have some worlds that I've created before, but what you should do is click on create new world and today we're going to call this um, sample world. You can call it anything that you want. We're going to make sure our game mode is in survival. Now if you click this button, you can switch into hardcore, you can switch into creative, um, and we'll go into creative mode a little later. But um, we're going to start with survival because there's something about playing the game in survival that is a little bit more authentic. So we're going to try that. Let's go into more world options. We're gonna make sure our cheats are on. Okay, so structures means that there might be some villages, there might be some dungeons already existing in the world. And um, if you do come across one, I want you to try to build your own because we're going to be building our own houses here. Um, so no cheating. So you can decide whether you want villages or not. You can also decide whether you wanna have cheats on. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that you're cheating by playing it with cheats on but it allows you to change the game mode, which we'll do a little bit later on. The other buttons here um, you can play around with. This one allows you to have different types of worlds. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and do the default world. All right, so uh, a world gets created, and this is, like I said, randomly generated and infinitely large. And what do I mean by infinitely large? Well, I mean that there is a person who literally just walks in one direction and he's been doing it for months. Um, he has like a YouTube channel and a bunch of followers. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's infinitely large. So before you do anything, I want you to have your right hand on your mouse. Now it's best played when you have an external mouse connected to your computer um, rather than a touchpad, but you can do it with a touchpad as well. So right hand on your mouse and you're going to push the mouse forward. You'll notice that you start to look up. Then I'm going to pull the mouse down and I'll look down, go to the left, it goes left, right, and it goes right. So you can imagine your mouse kind of like your neck. Okay, we're just going to kind of look around the world. Now what I like to say is that about the first two hours of playing is very strange. You don't really know where you are. You get a little bit nauseous. You click on the wrong keys. That's okay. Um, you'll start to understand the controls and you'll stop getting nauseous after about two hours of play. All right, so now that you know how to look, we're going to teach you how to move. So your left hand is going to rest comfortably on the left side of your keyboard with your left middle finger on the W key. That'll naturally allow it to slide down to that S key. So let's go ahead and just press W and you'll walk forward. Now you'll walk in the direction that you're facing, so you'll need to keep your right hand on the mouse because if I'm walking this way and I run into something, then maybe I'll want to come this way and maybe that way. And see, you'll start to see that it gets a little, watching somebody play can be a little bit more nauseous um, or it can get you a little bit more nauseous. And when you start to play, you'll start to get a little bit more comfortable with the controls and less jerky 
and it'll become easier. Now pushing S makes you move backwards. And then you'll notice that your left ring finger falls naturally on the A and your left pointer finger falls naturally on the D. A makes you go left and D makes you go right. So you can kind of just use those four keys, WASD, to go left, right, and backwards and forwards. Um, be careful of the water. If you fall in, you can drown. So don't do that. Now you might not be seeing the same kind of world that I'm seeing. I have a lot of mountains and a lot of trees and a lot of water. Um, you might be on an island where there's just sand. Um, you might be um, have a place where there are even more trees. You might have a place where there are even larger mountains. Um, every single world is, like I said, randomly generated. All right, so the next one, because um, we're kind of stuck down here and I'd like to get back up there, your thumb, your left thumb, should be naturally resting on that space key. So if you press it, you'll jump up. And if you push W while pressing it, you'll jump forward. So go ahead and try to find a place where there's some um, blocks that look like steps and just go ahead and jump up them and then go back down them and really just experiment. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video and just explore the world. I recommend exploring it for maybe about 10 minutes or so. Just kind of walk around, check out the other animals that you can find, see what kind of world you're living in. And when you're ready, just go ahead and press play on the video again. All right, welcome back. So by now you should be pretty familiar with walking around. Um, don't worry if it's still a little clunky. It'll, you'll get through that. The next thing I'm going to teach you how to do, because now you're a walker, which isn't that interesting in Minecraft, uh, I'm going to teach you how to mine. That's part of being a Minecrafter is mining. And the first part that we're going to do is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to mine dirt. So you're going to make sure that your little crosshair is on one of the sides of a block that you want to break. So I can be either on the top, the front the left, or sorry, the right, um, any of the sides here. And I'm just going to press and hold the left button key on my mouse. So press and hold. If I let go, it doesn't do anything. I'm going to press and hold it, and it breaks. And then the little dirt that I just broke kind of appears floating there. And if I walk up to it, I'll collect it. And now I have dirt. And um, that little pink square or tan square there in the corner um, on the bottom right, that's my hand, that's your hand. So you can actually um, see this is what we look like and so that's that's the hand and when I have the dirt in my hand that's why it looks like I have a hand that's made of dirt. Um, I don't, it's just in my hand. And um, the dirt goes into your hot bar. That's that nine square bar there at the bottom. And you can cycle through the items in your hotbar by pushing the one through nine keys on your keyboard. Let's go ahead and try that. And you'll notice when I'm on a block that doesn't have anything, then my hand is free. It just looks like a hand. Um, but when I'm on a block that's holding something like dirt, it looks like it's dirt because it's holding it. Um, now, you can either cycle to one with nothing on it or you can use the dirt to break it. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't hurt it. So let's go ahead and collect 20 pieces of dirt. Remember to press and hold while you're doing this so that you can actually break it. If you let go, it doesn't do anything. So you gotta make sure you press and hold. Now one thing that a lot of people end up doing is realizing they can just keep digging down and they make themselves into this like little hole and Okay, great, now I have 20 blocks, perfect. All right, wait, how do I get out? Because I can only jump one block high. How do I get out? Well, all you have to do is make yourself a little staircase. So if you accidentally made yourself into a little hole, just make yourself a little staircase and hop back out. Um, what's interesting is I've trained a lot of adults to play Minecraft and I'd say probably about like, you know, uh, a small percentage of, of, of people in my classes every single time get themselves into a hole and don't know how to get themselves out. And what's interesting is that students automatically know. They just figure it out really quickly. They're like, oh, well, I just got to make some stairs and get out. 
And that's what the power of Minecraft really brings. It is constant problem solving. You're stuck in a hole, what are you gonna do? Well, the only thing I can do, I can't jump high enough. I can break blocks though, and I can make a little staircase so I can jump out. And I can do that in any direction. So that's one of the really clear benefits of Minecraft is constantly your problem solving. So let's do a little bit more problem solving. We're gonna actually build a house now because every 12 minutes, there becomes there comes seven minutes of darkness. And well, first of all, I'm scared of the dark, but second of all, creatures come out in the dark and they can hurt you. So we're going to build a house. And I just want you to build um, maybe like three walls and they want them to be two blocks high. And the way that you place blocks is that instead of left clicking, you right click. And they're going to be placed wherever your cursor is. So if I wanted it back there, I'd place it there. If I wanted it in this area here, I could either look at this side, that side, or this side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build. Oh, and I can't put it here because that's where I'm standing. So I gotta back up a little bit. I'm gonna build three walls. And you should do the same. Great. Um, now there's a slight problem is uh, I've got like this little ledge here. You may not have that. I'm just going to put some blocks there. That's fine. Um, and that way I just have a little bit more. Oh, I ran out of dirt. You might have run out of dirt too. You can just go ahead and collect some more dirt. Um, I'm just going to get maybe like 10 more six more and that should be good all right so now we've got this little house and the problem is though um, there's no roof so creatures can get me from above now I can't place it here because then I can't actually go underneath it because I'm two blocks high as the character so you actually I mean you could jump up and try to place it like that um, that's a little awkward though so um, Instead of jumping up, you can make yourself a little scaffolding, a little stair, and then you can place blocks. Now, I would do that, except I don't have a lot of space. Um, I don't have any more blocks. I only have two blocks. So another option is that you can just dig deeper. So I'm just going to dig one layer deeper. I won't let go too quickly. There we go. Now it's at least three blocks high, and now I can use those blocks to just make a little roof above me. And maybe I need one more. Great. Awesome. So now I have my little my little house and maybe I want to make it a little bit wider um, and maybe I want to make this one so that it Oh, it's starting to get dark, and yours will probably start to get dark now, too. Um, you can see the sun is setting. So now I've got this little, like, entryway to my house. And hopefully no creatures will come in here. Um, now, I recommend that you kind of go out and explore the night, and I will tell you, you will die. So if you'll notice, you have little hearts there um, underneath, or right above your hot bar. And once those hearts are gone, you will die. So be very careful. Um, it's okay if you do though, all you do is respawn. Um, the scariest part for me is that when you die, you lose anything that you had in your hot bar and in your inventory, and you um, get respawned in a different location, so you might lose where your house is. Oh man, it's getting really dark. I'm just gonna go ahead and stay in my house for a little while. Um, maybe I'll come out. Uh, now I can't see anything. Uh, this is really tricky. This is the other reason I don't really like the dark, um, because it's hard to see once it gets dark. So, um, if you explore the darkness a little bit, um, you might come across creatures. Uh, there are lots of different types of creatures. There are spiders, there are zombies, there are skeletons. Um, looks like I just saw something over there. It's kind of hard to see. Um, uh, so there's lots of different creatures that can come and get you. And the, um, the only way to really protect yourself when you don't have any armor or anything like that is to build a house and kind of hide in there. 
So go ahead and explore the night. Um, I have a lot of clouds, which is making it, I think, harder. And since I have a lot of mountains, you can't really see the moon. Sometimes I'm in a world where there's a lot of um, light because the moon is shining really brightly. Um, oh, it looks like there's the moon. It's just hiding behind the trees and the clouds. So go ahead and explore. And if you die, just go ahead and respawn. And you can either explore for the full seven minutes, um, so pause the video, or when you come back, I'll tell you a little game command that you can use so that you can make it daytime again since we allow cheats. So if you want to pause and explore, go ahead, um, and when you're ready, come back. Awesome. So the command that I like to use or, um, you know, that, that people use to make it daytime is use type T, and that creates this little cursor in the bottom left of your screen. And then you can do slash time set day. And when you push enter, it'll turn it to noon again. So here's our house. Wonderful. And um, it's daytime now, so there are no creatures. Oh, it looks like that's a, a wizard or something. Um, so we have our little house here. And you have, well, maybe you didn't actually survive, but um, you have lived through your first Minecraft night. And if you go and tell any kid who plays Minecraft, um, oh, I survived my first night, they will applaud you and give you a high five um, because that is something to be proud of. Uh, this guy is poisoning me, I think. So you see my heart's just turned um, green because now I've been poisoned, which means you might actually get to see me die and respawn soon. Um, and I'll be able to show you what that looks like in just a couple seconds. I'm almost gone. This darn wizard man. So if you didn't die, um, this is what it looks like. So I was killed by a witch using magic. That's okay. Um, respawn, and now I have to go find my house again. That's the only unfortunate thing. Um, we won't do that, though, because I'm going to show you something else. So the next thing you're going to do, uh, by the way, you can now walk. You can now mine, and you've already created because you've created your first house. So you are miners, walkers and creators. And now it's time to become crafters. So we're going to have a break, find a tree, and get about five tree blocks. And you'll notice that it takes a lot longer to break down the tree blocks than it did the dirt blocks. And that's because, well, wood is harder than dirt. So I just broke a bunch of them at four. Let me get one more. Stand underneath the tree and grab it. So go ahead and, and um, break down a tree and collect all of the um, blocks. And then we're going to press E. And we're going to left click and let go. And then we're going to drag them up. Sorry, you're not clicking and dragging. You're left clicking, let go. Move your mouse up, left click, let go. And you'll notice that for each one birch wood square, I get four birch wood planks. So I can click, let go, click, let go, click, let go, click, let go. And I can do that. And we had five birchwood um, trunk pieces, and now we have 20 birchwood planks. And um, I could have put them next to each other, but instead I put them all on top of each other because they're the same type. So now instead of making a house out of dirt, I can make a house out of wood, which is a lot nicer than a house of dirt. So I can even incorporate this... Um, tree into it and have a live tree in my home. Awesome. So go ahead and explore that. Um, another thing that you can then do is I'm going to click with the left arrow, or sorry, the left mouse key, and then I'm going to right click in each of these four areas and I'm going to create a crafting table. And I'm going to put that crafting table in my house. I'm going to right click just like I did before. And I'm going to get some more wood because I want to show you what you can do with a crafting table. So I'm going to get maybe four more pieces of wood. Um, this cow is very curious. All right, there we go, four pieces of wood. Uh, maybe I'll make a few more planks. I can also right click, or sorry, no, you just want to left click. Um, so I have 16 more planks, so now I'm going to finish off my house here. Maybe I'll turn this into my little walkway into my house. I don't really need that dirt, but I'm going to open up my crafting table by right-clicking it, 
and I'm going to right click into these six slots here. And when I do that, I create a birch door. I actually create three birch doors. So now I can actually have a doorway into my home and I can make these. And when you right click the doorway, it opens. Open this up a little bit. And now I have a nice house. Maybe I need a roof. <laughs> Might be a good idea. I need one more piece of birch wood. I can go grab that other one that I. Ah. There we go. So now I have a house made entirely out of birch wood. And I have a door so I can just hang out in my house. And there's a little bit of light coming in from the door. Um, so it's wonderful. Um, so now I am safe for when it turns nighttime. And the interesting thing is I'm going to switch. Or um, The interesting thing is that once you um, start playing a little bit more, you'll start to realize that you can start mining. So you can go deep down underground. And if you remember um, when I was going down before, all of a sudden I came up to some stone. And if I try to break stone with just my hand, first of all, it takes forever. And second of all, I can't actually collect it. So you actually have to create a pitch, uh, sorry, a, um, you actually have to create tools to allow you to mine harder objects like stone. And once you've mined stone, you can create tools to mine harder um, materials such as diamond. And once you have diamond, you can make armor out of diamond. You can also make armor out of iron and gold and things like that. Um, but diamond is the is the hardest one. So um, the students, you know, your, your students will love to explore the world around them, um, to figure out how to craft things in order to create other things. Um, and this is just a very exploratory environment um, that you can do a lot of things with. So that's how you play in survival mode. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to bring up is that you can also play in um, creative mode. So if you allowed cheats, you can switch between modes by sl typing slash game mode C for creative or slash game mode S for survival. So I'm going to switch this into creative mode. You can also, when you're first creating it, um, make the survival mode creative, or sorry, make the mo game mode creative um, instead of survival. In creative mode, you'll notice that the hearts went away. And now when I left click a block, it just disappears immediately and no floating block appears for me to collect. And that's because if I type E to get into my inventory, I have unlimited blocks. I can go ahead and grab a jungle wood plank and I can um, place as many jungle wood planks as I want. So in creative mode, you have unlimited items. You can also fly by double clicking the space bar and then space goes up, shift goes down, Double click the space bar again to just fall. And while you're flying, you can use your WASD keys and your mouse to just fly around the world and explore it. And a lot of students like to play in creative mode and they just like to build incredible structures. They like to build replicas of vehicles, of the, um, the Taj Mahal, like these amazing structures. It's an absolutely creative and incredible experience to build something in Minecraft. Um, this is also a neat way to just kind of explore your world. So now that we are in creative mode, I can break stone with just a click of a button. And so I can just start kind of coming into this mountain and just see what's in there and you can just break it and, oh, it's hard to see. So I'm going to grab a torch and it's just incredible. Oh, there we go. So now I can see a little bit better. That's the little hole I just made. So instead of making a house, I can make a little cave. So this is creative mode, and I um, encourage you to explore Minecraft in both survival and creative mode. 
I encourage you to ask the children of your life, whether they are students or your own children or your nieces and nephews or your grandchildren, to teach you something, teach you their favorite thing to do in Minecraft. Um, I encourage you to go onto YouTube and just watch those videos that have been watched millions of times. And I encourage you to just have fun. Let yourself explore. It's like having an infinite set of Legos with creatures walking around. It's just, it's a ton of fun and you'll start to really understand why kids really love it. To get out of Minecraft, you just click escape. That also pauses it and gives you control of your mouse. And you just click save and quit to title and um, your sample world will be there again. And you can just play that one again. So I hope this has been informative for you and um, I hope you have a lot of fun playing Minecraft.